What is up, everybody? James Jackson here, back again with another video. And uh, right now, I am looking at the footages that you guys saw in the previous video. By the way, if you didn't, make sure to definitely go check out that video. These are just the first couple tests. I was going to do a lot more. However, the rain decided, if you saw my short, uh, to uh, take over the shoot and ended it abruptly. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to do that. But... I still have it here, so I'm going to just go through, so I think I want to start off with, I know a lot of you guys asked for like dynamic range tests, and I think this will be a good, uh, a good example of testing right here, so let's pull this up, so this is a shot I got of my daughter, so this is the MXF AVC that you, we all normally see here. Uh, by the way, so just for some settings, this was filmed uh, with the IRIX 45mm T1.5 at T-Stop 5.6 because uh, I wanted to try to get it a little bit more moodier as well as sort of try to get some of the exposure in the back, uh, in the, the, uh, the windows. And I also wanted to make sure I have the uh, color marker and as well as this bag sort of in frame. So this is set to uh, 24 frames per second. This is right now the MXF All I. And then this is the Raw ST. And this is the Raw ST from uh, Cinema Raw Light. And again, all the other settings are pretty much the same. Also ISO 800. So, and as we can just see initially, just from the raw ST, plays back, no issues. There is absolutely zero issues playing back the raw files in Resolve. So uh, let's just put this here, and then we will take the MX file and put that here. So let's take a look. So again, we got the Canon RAW. And then let's look at the XFABC. So, but I could just sort of, one of the things I immediately noticed is that there seems to be a bit more, like there's a little, definitely more noise, and we'll go full screen for a second. There's definitely more noise. This is the raw right here. And let's then, and then this is the XFABC. Now, I noticed that there is a crop and I think this was a mistake on my part, and I do apologize. I believe it's because the digital IS was turned on, and then, of course, RAW doesn't process anything, so uh, it basically turns it off automatically, whereas the MXF ABC does not. So that's probably why there is an additional crop. So, but, yeah, just from, this, uh, just from looking at it, it does appear that... Ever so slightly, there's less noise in the MXF AVC file. And then let's look back again at the RAW. Yeah, there's slightly bit no more noise. But, of course, one of the beauties is that we can go to the Canon. Though this is the Canon default. Uh, but it doesn't look like, at least right now, we can change the Canon default settings, unfortunately. But if we go to the clip, we can, oh, full res Canon, there it is. So yeah, full res Canon, and then we got Canon Log 3, and, this is, and so yeah, we can change Canon Log 3, Canon Log 2, uh, and 709. So you can make those changes, which is, Wonderful. Uh, I don't know why Canalog is not working on DaVinci, but uh, what's cool is we can make the decision. So yeah, sharpness, and I think that's the thing that some people have pointed out. It seems that the raw appears to be sharper, but that's because sharpness by default is like set to 10. So I'm going to turn this down, and I'm going to start looking at this. And let's go to the... It does appear to be sharper. The raw does appear to be sharper, even when you bring 
the sharpness all the way down, it does appear that the raw is no is de it does show more sharpness, and we can probably see that here. You can kind of definitely see it as we cut back to the bag. It is definitely the raw is definitely sharper, and you can definitely see it like on the blacks of the bags right here as we cut back. And also, it even looks like the blacks are a lot cleaner. For some, The blacks on the bag itself are much cleaner, which is a very interesting thing. At least that's what it looks like to me. Even though this does have more noise, the blacks on the bag look cleaner. But yeah, there's a definite sharpness difference with that. So... Those that have may felt the C270 is a, is a bit too soft. Uh, you can there is definitely a noticeable, and this is when again sharpness turned off down to zero. If we were to bring it back to the default setting, which is 10, 10, and now we look this back up. Yeah, I mean it does have that digital sharpness back, but we can always, but like I said, bring that back down. It's still, the sharpness is still really, oops. The sharpness is still very, very good. Now, let's sort of see what we can do. Let's uh, reset this. And now let's do this. And we're going to just do a simple color space transform. So we're going to do cinema and then log two. And then we're just going to uh, apply the grade the same grade here and uh, what and then what's definitely noticeable is that especially when you look at the reds of the bag if you look at the reds on the bag there is a definite there's more uh, um, depth in the colors especially the reds and the blues and you can definitely see that in the bag where this feels a little bit more washed out uh, and where this one has more de definitions in the primary colors, which you def which leads to sort of that look. Again, here's the, XF here's the XF ABC. And this is the all lie. So this is the highest quality you could record in the XF AVC. And then let's go back to the raw. Again, there is a, and you can also see this on the color chart. Uh, you can see it in the red, in, again, in the more of the primaries, the reds, the blue, and the greens. There's definitely more a fuller color, which is great. Let's reset that for a second. Let's go back. There's another set that I have. So this is uh, an underexposure, a little bit more of an underexposure test that we have here. And I'll bring these two down. And then I have um, shots outside as well. Uh, this was in the XAVC All I and the Raw LT. We'll start outside because this was the one that I got a brother, but I still got it. I got shots from outside. So in this case, let's change this to full res Canon and we'll go to clip. Actually, you know what? We could just keep it project settings. Uh, we don't, I don't feel the need to change any of this yet. And we'll take this and go to zero. So we can look at this. And see, this is the XF AVC that you see right here. And then let's go to yeah. There is, the, and then this is outside as well. And again, you could definitely see there is a noticeable sharpness boost, even with sharpness all the, brought all the way down. So. Let's just do a simple color space transform. So we're going to turn this uh, Canon Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 2. And then we're going to go to here, and we're going to apply the same grade. So it's just applying the same.
yeah, the rain was coming down, definitely. But as you guys can see here, uh, still the XAVC still, and this is the All Eye, still looks pretty damn impressive. But let's now go to Raw LT. And here is the Raw LT. Definitely good. And uh, again, the bag immediately, like just for me, the bag I've noticed stands out a bit more. Um, there's a little, it's a little bit more fluid, but you still got this natural organic look to it. Uh, so that's one of the things, but again, one of the things that we, I do love is that you can see it's playing back in DaVinci Resolve, uh, no issues whatsoever. And if I was to, let's stop this for a second. If I was to put up the task manager and let's run this again. And then I'm letting it run. Uh, the again, this is 4K 24, so nothing too intensive. I'm, I mean, I'm barely performing any uh, additional troubles with this. So as you can see here, the G, the GPU and the CPU are like barely even touching. I'm not burning through memory or anything. So I would say this is actually pretty efficient. I, I'll. Um, if I can, I'll probably be shooting 12 bit raw almost all the time. You get a better color depth where it allows you to stretch and let's, and we can actually see this, especially on a shot like this. So if we go to the vector scope, we go here and then let's go to here. You can definitely, and let's, uh, let me go here. I'm going to freeze frame these shots real quick. So give me a second. Oh, just so we can basically have a little bit of better understanding. So here it is. And you can see here, you can, you notice the difference uh, here. There's the raw has a fuller look of color. You can see it spread out here a little bit more. It has a little bit more color spread than it does on the X uh, than the XFABC. So, which means we get it allows us to go and also we can go push those saturations one. If we want a little bit more, if we want to go, uh, if we want to really kind of push the saturations up, we have a lot more space to do that than to say go into the saturation here and we basically just push up the saturation. And if we look at it, the C the R the raw formats are giving fuller sort of details than what the XFABC is doing. But, and also I'm going to release some of these footages on, um, I will release some of these footages to my, uh, my digital store. So definitely make sure to check them out in the, in the description below. So you can take a look at them, um, and you can try them out for yourself. So let's finally, let's get to the under lit. Uh, we are going to reset this and I'm going to go to the raw and reset this while still taking down the sharpness. So that's bringing it down. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's apply the grade, this grade and let's apply this grade. So all we're doing is just again, transforming it. I think this is interesting to see how this looks again. Uh, so this shot right here, the only thing that's lighting the scene right now is this one single lamp over here. So what I want to do is see how well uh, I can do about pulling the shadows up. So I'm going to just do this. So this is the XF ABC, and this is what the raw looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the XFABC. I'm going to just pull it up how I would normally pull it up, which is I'm going to get, let's open this up a little. I'm going to basically use the HDR to sort of help pull this up and all right so one of the, I think what I am going to let's see my waveforms I'm gonna bring up the exposure first and then I'm going to lift the shadows up and then I'm going to pull that down cool all right and so that's how I would normally do that. Let's go full screen so you can see. Um, and this is sort of what we get right here. So I'm going to first with the raw, I'm going 
to bring it up just like how this was. So I'm going to reset this and then I'm just going to apply the same grade. So let's see how it just looks doing that. And here's the thing I noticed immediately. Holy crap. Uh, the raw is way better at holding the darker parts. And it just, it, this feels, even though this is seriously underexposed, this looks way, way better controlled than how the XAVC, because let's go back to the XAVC. Like there's more greens, there's more discolorations over here as we as you, we try to bring those up. Whereas here, it's more organic. It's more organic and this is actually pretty damn impressive of what we're seeing right here. It does it a bit, it does it way more naturally, even in the raw metadata, which is quite fascinating. This feels way more natural. This feels more organic. The blacks look black. And there does seem as we go to the waveform, let's go to the waveform. It does seem that we got a bit more information in the in the black areas. So that's a very interesting thing here. So yeah, so these are basically the first few tests of the Canon EOS C70. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know, leave your comments below and make sure once again, hit that subscribe button so I can keep making update contents here. And as always, until next time, Take care, everyone.